the Frank Sinatra Show. And now, ladies and gentlemen, here is the star of our show, Frank Sinatra. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, ladies and gentlemen, I am not Frank Sinatra. Complain it again? Although I must say that we do resemble each other quite a bit. I mean, we're about the same height and our eyes are blue. That is, uh, his, mine are bluer than his. His are sort of a pale blue and mine are more of a blue surge, you see what I'm saying? <laughs> and of course, I'm a little bit heavier than Frankie. But then who isn't, you see? <laughs> but ladies and gentlemen, I did my first, my own first TV show a week ago last Sunday. I started my season. And I, thank you very much. <laughs> and I, um, and I was such a big hit that I'm now known as the Maury Amsterdam of the Pacific Coast. <laughs> and of course, the reason I'm here tonight with Frankie, you see, Frank did a guest shot on my television show last year when I was in New York, you see, and I didn't pay him for it, you know, I... <laughs> no, you know, we were pretty good friends and I didn't want to insult him, you see, <laughs> by paying him. And I understand that tonight, He's not insulting me, either. <laughs> you know, a friendship like that can break both of us, you know? <laughs> but um, another reason that I'm in New York is because last Friday, you probably read this in the paper, last Friday, the Friars Club gave me a testimonial dinner because of my... Um... <laughs> Thank you, because of my 20 years in radio, you see. And not only that, but also because I've been a member of the Friars Club, a theatrical organization for a long time, you see. And as a matter of fact, in Hollywood, I'm an officer of the uh, Friars Club. I'm known as the Dean. And that's a very, very important executive position. I would say that the Dean of the Friars Club is comparable to a photographer on Reader's Digest. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, it really is a great pleasure, exactly. ladies and gentlemen, to be here. Thank you. Thank you very, very much. Thank you. It's a great... It's a great pleasure, ladies and gentlemen, say, to... Say, Jack. Hmm? Pardon me. <laughs> Oh, oh, hello, Frank. It's a great pleasure, ladies and gentlemen, to be here Jack, tonight. What? Jack, you know, you were only supposed to introduce me and then tell a few jokes and then introduce me, you know. Oh. Well, you see, Frank, I got to talking about myself and I'm sort of carried away. You <laughs> know, how you get like yeah. that, you see. But uh, what are we supposed to do right now? Well, we usually do a song right about here. We do. Mm. Well, unfortunately, I don't sing. I don't know. <laughs> I, I know, Jack, but, but I'm supposed to sing a song here. Now. Oh, you're going to do the yeah. song, I see. Well, all right, I mean, on my show, we had a half hour. I got about three seconds so far. <laughs> it may storm I got my love to keep me warm I can't remember a worse December you just watch those icicles fall what do I care how the icicles form 
I got my love to keep me warm Off with my overcoat Off with my glove I need no overcoat I'm burning with love My heart's on fire With one desire So I will weather the storm What do I care How much it may storm I got my love to keep me warm Off with my overcoat Oh, hot feet Off with my glove I need no overcoat I'm burning with love My heart's on fire With one desire So I will weather the storm What do I care How much it may storm Look at here now I got my love to keep me On behalf of our sponsor, I would like to say that uh, we had a wonderful time uh, since we've Frank. been here. At, yeah. Frankie, okay. just a minute. Uh, this is the only thing, there's only one thing that bothers me on this show. What's that, Jack? Well, uh, you're mentioning the sponsors. Yeah. After all, I'm a, for one sponsor, you work for another. Mm -hmm. And uh, I didn't ask first whether there's any... Uh, Friction, you see oh, what conflict? I mean? Between conflict between the two. Oh no, Jack, you Friction shouldn't worry about that. No. <laughs> you don't have to correct me, you know. <laughs> no, look, Jack, the, pro the product. <laughs> My English is good as yours, at least. That <laughs> Jack, the pro the product. <laughs> the product is entirely different, Jack. Oh. I mean, we're on for Echo Wear. Echo Wear. Echo Wear. Echo Wear. Well, what's that? <laughs> That's a little echo we have here on our show, and he sees, uh, he stays on the ball every week when he hears this kind of thing go on. I wonder what keeps him so sharp all the time. Flint knives, flint knives, flint knives. Yeah, it's kind of cute. That's sort of an echo. Like that, huh? I say, yeah, it's cute. Whenever we mention a product, That's he right. repeats it. L.S. M.F.T. L.S. M.F.T. Echo, echo, echo. echo. <laughs> Lucky strike means fine tobacco. <laughs> Be happy by echo, be happy by echo strike. Be happy by echo, by echo strike today. All right, look at that. I've been smoking echo wear for now. <laughs> oh, that. All righty. Yeah. Then that's enough. All right, let's forget about the uh, echo business again. Now, Jack, what did you plan to do for us tonight? Well, I don't know. I thought uh, as a guest it'd be nice if I uh, told, came out, you know, and told jokes like I did before, you see. You think that's smart? <laughs> Look, Frank, I'm a comedian, you know. After all, you didn't hire John Foster Dulles here. You know. <laughs> well, Jack, what I mean is today, today the trend is much different than it's ever been. I mean, the comedians are more physical, like Jackie Gleason and Martin and Lewis and Red Skelton. They bounce up and down, they take falls, and they're always going, you know. It's very physical. Well, I, I have the same uh, uh, system, you see, mm -hmm. at home when I do my television shows, although... I have it worked out where I stand perfectly still, you see, and the camera moves <laughs> up and down, you see. In that way, the cameraman makes more money and I last longer, you see. <laughs> no, uh, no, I'm very serious, Jack. I mean, you've got you to take this seriously. You can't get by anymore on television with just talk. I mean, when you, even when you tell a story, you, mean you just a can't joke. tell a straight joke. You can't it? tell a joke. When you okay. do it on television, it's got to be acted out. Now, look, I'll show you what I mean. Mm -hmm. Two guys, that are, uh, they met at an Elks convention, see, Sam... And then Max, and they meet and they say they went to the barn and Sam says... Funny at rehearsal, it was Harry. <laughs> <laughs> Sam and Harry. Mm -hmm. And Sam walks up and he says, Hello, Harry, how are you? <laughs> See? He says, what do you know? He says, say, are you a large member? And the other fellow says, no, I'm just average size. And he says, it away. <laughs> Do you still make records? <laughs> Yes, of course I do. Good, good. 
<laughs> now, Jack. What? I think, though, seriously, uh, maybe you ought to get started by announcing. So, like, maybe, maybe maybe be a... sort of a master of ceremony. Yeah. Well, that's the thing that I would like to do on the show, Frank, mm. because that's what I've done all my life, even mm -hmm. before radio. All right. I was a master of ceremonies. Now, who would you like to me to introduce first? June Hutton. June Hutton, mm -hmm. I see. All right. Now, what uh, would you want me to say about her? I mean, you know much more about her than well, I Well, when introducing June Hutton, I would say something like, um, ladies and gentlemen, we're very fortunate tonight having with us a, uh, a uh, young lady who has provided, provided us with many, many pleasant vocal moments from show to show. And I hope uh, uh, she continues to do so in the future. And um, this young lady is not only gifted with a beautiful voice, but she has charm, she's lovely, and she's always welcome on our show. So ladies and gentlemen, we're very proud to present to you June Hutt. <laughs> Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, you know, Jack, I uh, wasn't kidding before, he's had a lot to do since he came to town with a friar's dinner and his own television show and a lot of stuff that he's been working. So he's a little tired now. This being an hour show, uh, he's up resting in his room. I have to go up and bring him a cup of hot milk in a little while. Meantime, I'd like to introduce a man who is probably one of the greatest artists in this field. Ladies and gentlemen, the wonderful Larry Griswold. <laughs> I'm really sorry, Mr. Sinatra, but Larry is unable to make it over here tonight, you see. What he, do you was mean? Out, he was out celebrating again, and he's in no condition to die. Well, what do you mean he can't make it? What are Disgrace we going to do about it? to my whole family. I'm Larry's father. Oh. I've known him ever since he was a little boy. <laughs> Look, I brought him all the dives. I'll run up and do a couple of dives so you won't disappoint your people. No, wait a minute, wait a minute. Don't Can worry. you do this? You of are course, right? I keep myself in good shape doing athletics down at the gymnasium at the YWMCA. Don't worry about it. <laughs> you worry about me. I've been a lot higher than this a lot of times. <laughs> hey, but watch who you're pushing around. I don't mind anyone shoveling, but don't push me. Shovel. First, I better try out the board for spring. <laughs> oh, the field over here. That's the high cotton Step. Well, <laughs> I'll start off with a swan dive and then lead up to the more complicated maneuvers. <laughs> 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 oh, 
Oh, that's my tie. Well, can't I close on here? Boy, that scared me too. I don't... We have another very unusual artist with us tonight, although he's just a 10-year-old boy. He's been acclaimed everywhere as one of the outstanding violin virtuosos of our time. His recent appearance at Carnegie Hall has won much praise, high praise, from all the critics. Ladies and gentlemen, Master Charles Castleman. Thank you, boy. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. For my first selection tonight, I would like to play the Ukrainian Fantasy by Wienowski Andrzej. <laughs> Pardon me, did you, pardon me, did you see Mr. Sinatra in here? Oh, yes, he went out that way. Oh, he did. Mm -hmm. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, pardon me. So, you, you play the violin, do you? Yes, sir. Do you, uh, do you practice? No, sir. You don't practice? Well, you'll, you'll certainly never get anywhere if you don't practice. You know? <laughs> After practice, 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 you see, if you want to be, if you want to be good, you know, and these are the important years, you know, I, I remember when I was your age. You do? <laughs> yes, I used to practice every day, and that's how I became a very, very fine violinist. Um, uh, you're going to play a number now, are you? Do you mind? Let me show, let me see how you, uh, how you hold the bow and everything. Oh, you'll never, you'll never get anywhere that way. Let me, well, let me show you. You see, in the first place, the way you're holding the bow, you see, it could slip right out of your hands. Don't you see? You must hold the bow like this. You see what I mean? Stiff like this. This is called the Western grip. You see what I mean? See, then it'll never get away. Now your your chin. How do you put the violin under? Your, no, 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 no. You must rest it a little bit. You see what I mean? A little bit like more, and hold this like this. You see what I mean? This keeps it from slicing. <laughs> 
you see in the screen, and keep one foot out, just a little bit, one out, one leg out a little bit. Oh, wait a minute. We'll keep the... You gotta keep the leg out just a little bit like this. Uh, there you are, you see. This way you won't. Now, this is the way to play a violin number. Now, let me hear you play a number now. Listen. Go ahead, let's hear it. Go ahead. You know, Sinatra's supposed to come out Here now, I am, but he Jack. forgot his cue altogether. <laughs> oh, pardon me. What are you doing, Jack? Huh? Well, I'm just giving the, the kid a few pointers, I think. Oh, really? Mm hmm. Uh, Jack, did you ever hear of the concert violinist Charles Castleman? Charles Castleman? Yes, we went to school together. Oh, really? <laughs> uh, in fact, I taught him everything he knew, you know. Yeah. But, Jack, uh, this is Charles Castleman. Oh. Well, the Charles Castleman I think of, I'm thinking of had a trio in Waukegan. There was a, a violin, an organ, and a monkey. You see what I mean? The monkey now has his own band. It's called Spike Jones. <laughs> Jack. Let's get out for a while. We'll let Charles Castleman play this. Uh, okay. Fiddle, huh? I still think he hasn't got his legs right. I don't know. <laughs> this thing. Good man. 
make such music begin. Is a love song from the start And when you hear my song You'll hear my heart Is a love song from the start And when you hear my song You'll hear my heart Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, it's tea time. You see, we feel that uh, they're building another bungalow back there. <laughs> we feel that uh, it's a halfway mark in our show at this point. A football team gets time off between halves, so I don't see why we shouldn't. I look like a football team. Well, what are you going to do? <laughs> you know, this is our last show from New York City. <laughs> Starting... Uh, Starting next week, our program will originate from Hollywood, the land of the sunshine. <laughs> sunshine! <laughs> hey. I understand like, one day last week they had eight inches of sunshine out there. <laughs> but I'm looking forward to the trip back because we're planning to fly the southern route. See, when the plane flies over Washington, I want to wave goodbye to some of the money that we're leaving back. <laughs> You know, I found out recently that there's a, there's a trick to this, you see. I mean, guys like uh, Harry Richman, uh, Georgie Price, uh, <laughs> Hope and Crosby, they got sidelines, side rackets. Crosby's got an orange juice business, Hope has oil wells. I got a trunk full of old bow ties. <laughs> and speaking of money, our guest tonight is not exactly destitute himself. You know, Jack goes around and he tells everybody that he has something put aside for a rainy day. It could pour for 40 years, <laughs> and he'd still be drier than a cow in a Kansas dust bowl. <laughs> There's a bad joke. Well, what are you going to do? <laughs> and it was such a long time getting around to a bad joke like that. Of course, there are other things in life besides money, but it takes money to get them. You know, it makes you a little nervous. Anyway, it'll be nice getting back to the coast for a change. I mean, uh, last season we did all our shows from here and a few this year, and I think that our New York fan club deserves a rest. See? Down, Spotty. Matter of fact, we got a note from our Hollywood branch, and they're raring to go. They've been practicing by getting autographs from uh, Champ Butler or, or a couple of those boys out there. See, they stay in practice. You know, it's amazing how, how wonderful these kids are, really. They wait around, like, for instance, on a pouring rainy day. They wait for six hours for an autograph, and finally, when they get up real close to you, some little guy looks, he says, Ah, this guy's nothing. <laughs> you know, nine chances out of ten, he's right. <laughs> I mean, when I was a kid, I used to wait outside of stage doors. I don't want to give anybody's age away, but when I was a kid, I used to wait for Crosby's autograph. <laughs> I'll never get one day, I said, you know, I have aspirations of being a singer. And he said something very nice, very encouraging to me. He said, you keep singing, kid. Someday you may be another Rudy Valley. <laughs> oh. <laughs> what are you going to do? Pop, you can't help it. You'll have to excuse me. I'm a little bit... <laughs> I haven't <been> well. <laughs> I, uh... Up, uh, I was up a little late last night. Jack Benny invited me to a party. Party? I should have known what kind of an affair it would be when he brought his fiddle along. <laughs> he told me that they were very, very dear friends of his and it was going to be a lot of fun. It was some little place over in Jackson Heights and the, it's called the Banquet Room, the Banquet Room of Kozlenko's Bar and Grill. 
It's in the back, you know, where they have the weddings. And it's on Queens Boulevard, right next door to Zabriskie's Bowling Alley. <laughs> and Jimmy Pros is a saloon over there where Gleason hangs out. Well, when we got there... <laughs> When we got there, the say we were riot tonight. <laughs> we got there, the party was on the way, and you should have seen the ball that they were having. I gotta move the stool now. next door makes so much noise. Now, what is it, my little one? Well, Papa, what's the matter with the band? Are we going to have a fiddle player? Sure, I hired one. He's late. He should be here 15 minutes ago already. Well, who did you get, Papa? His name is Jack Benny. He's the same fellow who played at, at Mama and Mine wedding. Oh. Hey, is he real good? <laughs> one of the best. You think I spend $12 a night for just anybody? Papa, $12 for just a fiddle player? Well, out of this he has to pay a singer who he's bringing with him. Well, we'll get it. Hey, this looks like fun, Jack. Yeah, how about that? We're gonna have a ball, aren't we? Yeah, she's kind of cute, isn't she? Yeah. I wonder if she's got a friend. I doubt it very much. <laughs> what was that joke about the Kansas Dust Bowl? <laughs> <laughs> that was before her. Oh, oh. <laughs> hey, there's, there's, there's our host, Pulaski. Hey, Mr. Pulaski. Hello. Oh, hello, Mr. Benny. I want Benny. you to meet Mr. Sinatra. How do you do? I thought you were going to bring a singer. Well, he is a singer. That skinny little thing? Well, I mean, everybody can't be Alonzo. <laughs> Don't forget, listen, he's wonderful, Mr. Pulaski, really. You know, I wouldn't jeopardize my reputation. After all, someday your daughter will have children. When they get married, I want their business, too, you know. Well, maybe you're right. Oh, and remember another thing. The musicians only get two sandwiches apiece. There's no limit on the coleslaw and the pickles, though. Oh, coleslaw, pickles, all you want. Hey, Jack, what? Jack, what's going on here? Well, Mr. Pulaski, you know, as long as we came over as guests, he wanted to know if I'd play a violin solo, and maybe you'd sing a song for him. Oh, no, Jack, I am rather tired. I don't want what? to... What? You know, sing? Listen, for, I mean, for two sandwiches? I'll give you three sandwiches. What's it? I'll give you one of mine, you know. All right. What is that? That's a bowling alley. That's a bowling alley. Oh, that's the Brisky's bowling alley next door. I, used to, I played for his wedding. Oh, you too. know him, too? Yeah. I brought Lanny Ross with me that time. <laughs> You know, I guess I'm not as healthy as I think I am. What do you mean? That's the second time that vulture came down to take a look at me. <laughs> well, look, let's congratulate the bride. Yeah, huh? that's a good idea. Yeah. Okay. okay thanks. Congratulations. Oh, thanks very much. Thanks. Say, uh, Jack. Uh, Jack. What is this bit they're doing here? Well, you see, at Polish weddings, Frank, you see, they never give gifts. They always give money. See, oh, they send really? the money in envelopes. Say, that's wonderful. Yeah. I think I'll contribute something to the bride. I think that's a wonderful idea. Thank you very much, and good luck Thank with you both. Thank you very uh, much. Jack, what about you? Well, I thought I'd wait till I get home and give them uh, for my own personal stationery. You oh, know what I, I mean? Yeah. It'll be... Uh, well, congratulations, Miss... Uh, Miss... Oh, Louise, Stella, Marie, Francis, Taplitsky. Uh. 
Say, Jack, uh, by some strange coincidence, those initials spell L-S-M-F-T. What coincidence? My sponsor arranged it, the whole thing. Oh. Be happy, go lucky. Oh, thanks very much. You're welcome. Listen, do you want to dance? If you want to dance, I'll watch the money. I'll watch the money. You dance. No, it doesn't make any I didn't hire you to dance. I hired you to play. Oh. Well, all right. I, but you know, when, I, when the music starts, I can't make my feet behave, really. I can't. And tell that singer I want to hear him sing. Frankie, yeah. wait a minute. Yeah, Jack. This fellow would like to hear you sing a song. After all, you know, how many times do they get a fellow like Sinatra here? Well, Why don't you sing a song for him? Well, huh? saying as you, you put it that way, uh, okay, let's, okay. let's, let's well, do I'll a get song. You get the violin. What do you, uh, what do you want to do, Jack? <coughs> huh? What do you want to do? Come on, we'll play. We'll all right, play. let's go. Okay. We'd like want? to sing a song for you. We just nearly got killed. We nearly had an accident here yeah. with a bowling ball came in there. That was no accident. <laughs> <laughs> they aimed at you. <laughs> You're both through. Here's your nine dollars. Wait a minute. You promised me twelve dollars. Three for the singer. Jack, how could you do such a thing? Inviting me over here and telling me it was a party and then selling me out for three bucks. Frank, I tried to get you five, but he wouldn't <laughs> buy. Well, you're both fired. Take your nine dollars and out! Okay. I'm sorry, Frank. That was the best I could do. That's all right. Well, let's get well, out of okay, here. Okay, come huh? on. Let's go. Gee, oh, wait a minute. Now, wait a minute. They promised us the sandwiches. <laughs> and they said there was no limit to the coleslaw and the pickle. <laughs> Gather stars out of the blue for you, for you. I would make a string of pearls out of the dew for you, for you. Over the highway and over the street Carpets of clover I'll lay at your feet There's nothing in this world I would not do For you Just for you Carpets of clover I'm gonna lay at your feet There is nothing in this world I would not do Baby, for you Ladies and gentlemen, Sunday was a very significant date, and we don't want to pass it without saying something about Armistice Day, particularly in view of what's going on in the world today. <coughs> Back in 1918, Armistice Day meant the end of a war, but it has come to mean a lot more than that. It's a symbol of the things this country has always fought for, freedom, equality, and our way of life. A few years ago in Hollywood, <coughs> 
Frank Sinatra made a picture that pretty well expresses all of these things. The picture was called The House I Live In. And anything it had to say then, it still has to say right now. Ladies and gentlemen, The House I Live In. Looks like somebody's in for a licking, huh? You bet! We're gonna smear him! All right, wait a minute. Back up, back up now. Steady. That's all right, but six against one. That's not very fair, is it? Oh, come on, gang. What's the matter, you? What's it all about? No, I'm, no, I'm not scared. I'll fight you, even. Well, not if I can help it. You look like you can take care of yourself. I just want to know what the gang war is for. We don't like him. We don't want him in our neighborhood. I'm going to our school. See? I've been living here as long as you, since I was born, even. Yeah, yeah. Come on now. Now, let's cut it out. I'm serious. What's the matter? Has he got smallpox? We don't like his religion. His religion? Yeah, he's a dirty... Yeah, wait a minute. Now, I think I'm beginning to understand this thing. Yeah, it must be one of those Rat Pack gangs I've read about in the papers who beat up on people. Mister, we ain't no Rat Pack. Well, you ain't regular guys, for sure, I can tell you that. I don't know what we ought to do about this. It must be pretty tough, huh? You bet. What about your dad? What kind of a man is he? What would he say about this? My pup's so tough, he'd smear you. He would, huh? He's a pretty tough guy, huh? You bet. He's mm -hmm. a sergeant in the army. He was wounded in Korea. Oh, he was wounded, huh? Say, I'll bet he got some of that blood plasma that, that you've been reading about, the Red Cross. You bet. It was hurt so bad, he had to get it six times. He told me even. Six times, huh? Son, anybody in your family ever go to the blood bank? Your mother and father both. Hey, it's pretty serious. You know, it could be that uh, his father's blood helped save your dad's life. That's pretty bad, isn't it? What's bad about it? Well, don't you see? His father doesn't go to the same church as your father. Now, you think maybe your dad would rather have died than to take blood from a man of another religion? Would you have wanted him to die, or your mom? No. Well, don't you understand, fellas? Religion doesn't make any real difference. God created everybody. God didn't create one people better than another. And people worship God in different ways all over the world. Many, many different ways. Now, my father came from Italy, but I'm an American. But should I hate you because... Your dad came from Ireland or Sweden or Holland. Now, wouldn't I be a fathead? You guys, by chance, remember anything about Pearl Harbor? You ever read about it or hear about it? You bet I did. My Uncle Mike was in the Navy. Oh, he was. Now, did he ever tell you about a battleship, Jap battleship called the Haruna? No. Let me see if I can remember. It seems that the Haruna was raising the Dickens with our boys, and one day one of our planes sighted it and got right over it. And you know what it takes to bomb a battleship, fellas? It takes teamwork and a lot of guts and know-how. And one of our planes got over it and dropped a big 500-pound bomb right smack in the middle of it. And everybody in the United States kind of threw their head back and felt a lot better about that. Now, the pilot of that airplane was Colin Kelly. He was an American and a Presbyterian. And you know who dropped the bombs? A boy from Brooklyn named Maya Levin, an American and a Jew. Now, do you think maybe they should have called off the whole bombing raid because they weren't of the same religion? Do you? Of course not. Don't be silly. And don't, only, don't let anybody make suckers out of you. Use your good heads. And let's have no more of this fighting. Well, I'll see you around. I gotta go to work. What do you work? I sing. Oh, you're kidding. <laughs> I'll tell you what. <clears throat> you just stand right here and no hissing allowed. America to me, a name, a map, or a flag I see, a certain word, democracy, what is America to me? The house I live in 
a plot of earth, a street, the grocer and the butcher, and the people that I meet, the children in the playground, the faces that I see, all races and religions. That's America to me. The place I work in, the worker by my side, the little town or city where my people lived and died, the howdy and the handshake, the air of feeling free. That's America to me The things I see about me The big things and the small The little corner newsstand And the house a mile tall The wedding and the churchyard The laughter and the tears And the dream that's been a growing for a hundred and sixty years The town I live in The street, the house, the room The pavement of the city Or a garden all in bloom the church, the school, the clubhouse, the million lights I see, but especially the people. That's America to me. See you around, boys. Bye now. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. That's a fine piece of material. I wouldn't mind doing that every week. It's such a great piece of material. Uh, I'd like to thank Jack Benny for doing such a wonderful job for us tonight, considering he didn't get any money for it. Uh, <laughs> and uh, so, ladies and gentlemen, will you help me thank Mr. Benny, Mr. Jack Benny, for doing such a wonderful job. Great pleasure being with you, you know. What was that joke about the Kansas dust? <laughs> <laughs> well, Frank, now that you're going out the coast, maybe you can now do a show. You can be a guest on my show now, you see? Yeah, well, Jack, I, I, I really would like that, but the, the next time I'd like to get paid. <laughs> well, why? Well, you I see, mean, I've been a guest on your show, and you were a guest on mine, and yeah, now but we're you see, even, you are, well, we? No, no, we're not even. You see, you do an hour show, and I only do a half hour show, you see? <laughs> So, I mean, you owe me some change. <laughs> well, uh, yes, that's, as a matter of fact, well, I'll talk to you about that when I get okay. out on the coast. When Jack. are you leaving for the coast? Well, I'm leaving tonight, right after the show. Oh, you're going tonight? Mm -hmm. So we'll soon. It is a shame. Why, Jack? I wonder if Mel Torme is in town. Because <laughs> I'm, what? I'm playing at another wedding tomorrow. <laughs> well, I'll get Robert Merrill. He'll Ro be all Robert right. Yeah, he'll be all right. Thanks, Frank. Good night, Good night. Jack. Wonderful to you. just about the nicest person I've ever known in, in all of show business. He's a real wonderful guy. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, next week we have, uh, on our show from the coast, we have uh, two wonderful people whom we used last year. And I'm, I'm deeply proud because I rooted so hard. We have the manager of the year, Mr. Leo DeRocher, and, uh, and his lovely wife, Lorraine Day. So we have DeRocher and Day. 
And uh, we may needle the Dodger fans a little bit. But uh, we hope to have some fun. And in future weeks, we'll have a visit from Bob Hope and people like uh, Lucille Ball and Desi Arnaz and Dinah Shaw, possibly. We, we'll see you all very soon, so keep watching and drop us a line if you'd like to hear any particular song. Good night and bless you.